going to look at doing uh, an insert. We had most of the insert uh, ready other than a SQL statement, if I recall correctly from last time. Uh, so we'll take a look at it and we'll make sure that that is up to speed and uh, we'll go from there. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and open it. There's an aspect of it that you're not going to like, but it's better than doing it all by yourself. The framework does not realize that most of the time you want to treat an edit the same way as an add, right? So if there's validation on the edit, there should be validation on the add too, right? Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, I that. yeah. Um, small, small cost to pay for, for having it do so much for you. So let's open this up. I'm going to set the default page to the start page. That's a good trick, by the way, if you know, because otherwise it, it assumes that the page that you're editing is the page that you want to start on. And sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes, for example, you might be working on a page that's dependent on another page. And so, you know, it, it'll come up with a blank grid or whatever. Whereas this one, you know, this it, with this you can ensure the order that it appears in. All right, so let's look at this page. I haven't really changed too much about the visual part of it yet. We'll be getting to that today. Um, one thing that we did do is we put in. Um, do do what did we put in? We put in the ability to insert on the grid view. We clicked on and we put enable inserting. Now we did that even though that in this mode we're in edit mode. All right, so even though we're in edit mode, we've set it up so that we can do inserting. And the way that you do that, the way that you get the opportunity to do that is you have to supply an insert statement. So I went in and put in a dummy insert statement in there. That gave me the ability to do that. The other little trick that we did in this is we wanted to know what mode this details view should be in. Should it be in edit or insert mode? Because we're using the same page for both editing and inserting. The difference being is if someone's logged on, we want to allow them to edit their information. If someone is not logged on, we want to allow them to insert and create a new person. Um, so what we did was we put code in the code behind that looks at the session variable for plater ID and decide and sees if it's null or not. If it's null, that means that the person is not logged in yet. And if they're not logged in, we want to set the, 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 the default mode for the details view to insert mode. All right. Otherwise, it stays at edit mode, which is the mode that we were in. Uh, originally that we, we've done all the previous examples in. All right, so now if I remember right, the only thing we need to do is, and, and I'll go and run this to, to demonstrate what I mean. If I run this and I'm not logged on, and I click the register link, it takes me to that page with a blank page. So I can insert a new person. If I log on, it's going to take me to the same page, but because I'm logged on, it's going to, be, it's going to populate my data and allow me to edit. Yeah. So there you go. All right. Now, the only thing that we have, the only thing that we really need to do is make the insert 
work. And if I'm not mistaken, the only thing we really need to do for that is to create the proper insert statement. So let's go in our data source, configure data source. this just so I remember the column names when I go into insert. So the proper syntax for an insert statement, insert into and then the player name. You then have a list of columns and you have a list of values. You don't have to put all the columns there for whatever reason. If there was a column, for example, that maybe the, the, the application maintained on its own that wasn't user entry, like last login or something like that, then you wouldn't have to put all the, the, the columns in. You would have to put in all the columns, certainly, that are required. And if you are putting in a column that is part of a foreign key relationship, you, of course, have to make sure that that matches up with the other table. So, for example, in this case, I'm putting in age range ID, and therefore I better make sure that the age range ID that I put in matches something in the age range table. <clears throat> I do not have to give a value for the player ID because I'm inserting. Why? Because it's an auto number field. Be, by virtue of it being an auto number field, it will auto, automatically generate the next available number, the next number in the sequence. Is that another reason why it's a really good idea to use this auto number? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. yeah. You, don't have to, you don't have to worry about it. Right. Well, I guess if you were using a social, you just have to have a particular social. Well, if you were using, if you're using something, something else that should be unique, for one thing, if you use social security number, I have a feeling everyone would avoid your site like the plague because of the privacy issues associated with it. But if you ask for something that ought to be unique, like your cell phone number, or something like that, right. or an email address. A lot of places use email addresses. Why? Because they should be unique. Right. It's amazing. I'll still, and, and not to stereotype because I'm an older fella too, but it's amazing when I see like people, like a couple that has like a shared email account. You know, it's usually older folks. It's like, oh, that's so cute, you know. But it's like email accounts don't cost anything, you know. My favorite is to join Facebook. Well, yeah. Bob and Mary, you know, Johnson. You can have your own Bob and Mary. You have your shared Facebook? Yeah. See there, you went you went, and... I touched the person. I'm sorry. Yeah, there you go. My girlfriend's husband wouldn't do that to her. Also. Oh, boy, that's a whole... Oh, here we go. We got some trust. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow, that, that's a whole yes. other issue. Yes. All right, back to programming, something I know something about. All right, I am, oh, user ID. User ID, remember, is distinct from player ID. Player ID is the, the key to this table. User ID is, the, is their username, actually. Maybe, it was mis, maybe I misnamed that column. It's the name that they're going to log in. So I do want to be able to insert that. I do want to insert user password. And I do want to insert age range ID. Let me just glance at the spelling. F name, L name, user ID, user password, age range ID. Now I have to then give the proper number of question marks to match up for that. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Put. One, two, <coughs> okay. So we should be okay with the insert statement. Let's finish this here up. And 
let's give it a shot. Okay, so I'll go here and I'm going, I'm going to try to register someone. Notice how the insert mode doesn't even have the primary key in it. Right? If I remember right, the update shows a primary key. Maybe not. I don't know. Well, we'll have to look. An age range ID is a text box. Why is it a text box? Well, remember, this is a default behavior of a details view. That in insert mode, in edit mode, by default, anything that you can edit is going to be put in a text box. So that's why if you were paying attention, password was not in a password um, input field. So the 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 characters were echoed back to me so I could see it as opposed to getting the dots or whatever. Remember, that's a default behavior. Also, we won't test this, but there's also no validation for this, by the way. All right. So I better put in a right age range ID for this to work. So I'll put in five because I'm pretty sure five was one of our valid age range IDs. Insert, could not find output table players. All right. What is wrong with that? The table is probably called player, not players. That was a case of a very um, clear error message, right? It told me it can't find the name, uh, can't find the table name players. And I'm like, what? I have a table named players. I can show you it right here. Oh, never mind, it's player. Okay, so that's pretty clear. Other times you will get more obscure error messages. The one um, sort of common obscure error message that you um, get is something like uh, values not given for all columns or all parameters or something along those lines. And that could be if you get a column name wrong. That could also be if you use a reserved word for, um, for a column name. You know, for example, if you had, if you're doing, and, and someone in here is doing an airline, I think, and uh, an airline project for their semester project, you know, don't call a column from, all right? Because from is a reserved word, right? Select blah, blah, blah from the table name. So if you called it from, it's going to get confused. If you mess up and do call something a reserved word that you didn't think of, you can enclose it in square brackets. You can actually always enclose your, in, enclose your columns in square, square brackets, and, and it won't do any harm, uh, and it might help it work. So let's go in and fix this. I was going to say, I thought I copied the update statement, which I did, but I only did that to get the column names. I did not do, use that to get the table name. All right, let's give this guy a shot. Which is why, by the way, it told me, it asked me about updating the keys. That was a little bit of a mystery to me. I'm like, why is it updating the keys? I'm, I'm using columns I've already picked, but it thought that there was a player's table, so. Or I thought there was a player's table. So, okay, let's go in, try again. Data mismatch in criteria expression. Okay, another good error. 
Let's try to debug this one. Gives you the very useful suggestion of please review the stack trace. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that explains it. <laughs> what I like to do with this is I like to go and copy the code into access and see if I have an issue there. So let's go in, and let's go into Access, and let me go in, and I'm going to create a query. Paste my SQL in. And of course, all I really have to do is supply the values for that. So I have to supply values for the question mark. So I could go A, comma, B, comma, DH, comma, I'm missing the email. I'm thinking that's what's doing in the end. Okay. to run a pen query. Do I want to? Yes, I do. About to pen one row? Yes. Let's do now due to a type conversion failure. And it didn't add one record to the table due to key violations. There's two DHs. Uh, right, Doug Huber, Don Huffman. User ID ought to be unique. That might have been, yeah. Let's go in here to edit. or something. All right, so that might be the problem, is I was adding a duplicate user, user ID. Let's go delete these so that we have more gaps, and let's go add Paul Norad instead. I guess we could still add Doug, but I don't know his middle initial. We'll make it Doug H. I don't want to spite him. All right, so Let's go and run 
done this. Register. First name, Doug Huber. Email. User ID. Doug H, which spells Doe. Password, password, age range ID 5. Insert. All right. We're still getting an error. All right. I proved that my insert statement should work. So what could be the problem? Well, the problem is you have with any of these component-based things is we have to go and look and match up stuff and make sure that this is getting, our, our insert statement is getting the right values that it needs. And this is done via... the insert command. There's the update command. My guess is what it's doing is if you notice in the update command I have email. Here I do not have email. My guess is is that it's trying to stuff one of the fields into the age range ID that's, an, that's a numeric Age range, age range ID is a numeric field because I've only specified five of the six columns that are editable. It's trying to stuff one of those into age range ID and it's causing it to blow up. The solution of this will be to go in and first name, last name, email. And then put another question mark here. You got to make sure you get the question mark in the exact right place. Uh, that was a joke. It doesn't matter because it's just seeing a bunch of question marks there. You do have to make, well, let's go and run this. And let's see if this works. It did work. Now, if you notice, it's kind of goofy, right? Because it went right back into insert mode, which is all this page knows how to do. All this page knows how to do is if you're logged on, go into insert mode. If you're not logged on, I'm sorry, if you're logged on, go into edit mode. If you're not logged in, go into insert mode. So after this insert succeeded, it reloaded itself, right? How can we fix that? What do we want to do after someone's registered? Redirect them back to the login page all right, so that they can go and log in. So let's go and do that. Where do you suppose I'm going to put the code for that? Code behind file. Code behind file. That's slightly more, speci that, that's slightly more specific than saying on the computer. So I'll give you so, points for that. Okay, very very good. It would not be updated though in this case, it would be inserted. Right, so I'm going to look at, and I'm going to go put on the details view, notice we have on item updated, that is what will fire off after the item is updated. I can say on item inserted equals and give a new event. All right. Now I can go in the code behind, and now I can do some stuff. Well, what do you, what should I do here? What should I do here? 
write an if statement, and what's the if statement going to say? You want to check to see if the insertion was successful. Right, we want to make sure the insertion worked, right? We were getting some awfully ugly errors there, all right? There could be more subtle errors that we could get, like if, if you know, for example, and, and we'll, we'll see an example of that if I go in and try to add another MZ, all right? We'll still get errors. Even when we add validation, remember, there's still the chance that we could get errors. Just like with a deletion, there's still a chance we could get errors because when we go and delete, we don't know if there's related rows out there. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do very similar to what I did here. Probably the same probable causes for an update is when I do an insert, right? Especially given the fact that I'm auto-generating the key. All right? So that's a reasonable enough message to keep. But if there's no exception, I want to redirect and I will response. redirect to the login pages. <clears throat> There's another way I could handle this, but I notice almost no websites do it. So I haven't really thought this one through as to why most websites do that. What was my other alternative what, that I could do here? I could just log them in. Right after you register, automatically log them in. All right, but I've noticed a lot of websites don't do that. If you register and redirects you to a login page, you got to go and log in, which kind of is annoying. But maybe it's laziness on the coder's part, you know. Well, sometimes you have to confirm. That's very That's true. Like Some that. sometimes you have to confirm. So they send you an email, and then you have to click on, and then you're allowed to to go in. But and I kind of like it because it shows me. That I've actually created a, an account. To, where it doesn't log you on? Right, where they go back to the yeah. log okay. and then I get to log in. Yeah, and, and then you have to remember you have to remember what your user ID and password is and, and right. that verifies that you did it correctly mm -hmm. and and cements your right. So yeah, I, I guess there's 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 some good reasons for it. Mm -hmm. I, I just I get impatient. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's try this. All right. Not logged in, I go to the logon page. I click there. I will go It inserts it. It takes me there. I can type in and log in, JD, password, and there I go, and I'm able to go and edit that. All right. Let's try this again, but let's get an error. Let's try to put a try to put someone in that, that already already exists, you know, the same user ID, all right, to make sure that we catch the error correctly. So I can go and register and Jim Davis. User ID will try JD again. It shouldn't let me, right? Because there's a unique index on that. And again, sure enough, we get 
error possible cause duplicate user ID. That's kind of brutal that it wiped out all the data. Um, we could probably figure out a way around that. I don't know if we're going to do that today or not. The other problem, of course, is the way this is written, I'm not validating any of the database constraints, right? So if first name or last name was required, or the age range is supposed to be a valid age range, it has to match up with something in the age range table, I'm not getting any of that, right? I'm not getting any of that validation. But wait, you might say, that validation is in the edit mode. Doesn't matter. All right? So I created a dropdown for age range ID, and I put it in edit mode. So if I'm logged on, there's a dropdown for it. For the insertion, though, there is no dropdown for the age range ID. All right? Why? Well, because it's a different template. There's a different template for insert and edit. Therefore, if you add a template item for the edit, you don't automatically get it for the insert too. Again, that's kind of odd in a way, but by doing that, it does give you the flexibility if for whatever reason you want to handle inserts and updates differently. I, I can't think of a case where I want to do that off the top of my head, but if it locked you into making these always match up, then um, it would be difficult to, to you know, you, you know, then then you wouldn't have the flexibility to make the two modes different if, if you saw fit in a particular in a particular circumstance. So therefore, um, we have to go back in. We have to go and add those things in. So whatever we added to the other one, we're going to have to add to this. And I don't think we added everything to the other one. I think we added just one validator, and I added a drop down for age range ID. So I'll do that now. All right. So, let me go in and the good news is that first name and age range ID are already converted to template columns. So I don't have to do that again. <clears throat> but I do have to go and say edit template column, edit templates, and I can pick for first name the item template is what? The item template is for when the uh, grid view or details view is being displayed in read-only mode. That's not relevant here. All right? We want a label. That's fine. This can be a label. Alternating uh, item template, that way we could stagger things if we had a long grid and we went across. No, we're not worried about that. Edit item, we've already done. We put the validation scheme in there. Header template, we could, we could create some sort of template for the header, actually, of the column. We're interested in insert item template. And notice, again, despite the fact that there was a validator on the edit, we don't get that validator here. But the good news is, is it's something that's easy enough to, to add. So I can go in and add a required field validator here. And I can set the properties of it must enter a first name. Control to validate will be text box one. Remember for these things, for these validations that we're putting in the template items, we actually pull the validation into the template item. Because remember, that text box isn't there all the time. That text box is only there when we're in an insert mode. So therefore, we have to pull that into the template. All right. So I can go in then and choose that I want to do the, I could do the user password. I'm going to skip it. I could put a second text box in there and make sure the two matched. All right, as a valid, as an additional validation, something that you really you see often. Uh, I'm going to go into age range ID into the insert template, and I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to create a drop down. I'm 
I'm going to create a data source. Configure the data source. I then do sort of two kinds of bindings. I bind the drop down to the data source. That is choosing the data source. Data source for this is going to be my data source I just created. What do I want to display? I want to display the description. What's going to be the value behind the scenes? What do I need to stuff back into the database? I need to stuff back in the age range ID. So therefore, I select that as being the value. Now, the other thing we have to do is we have to tell where the data is going to come from and where is it going to go. And that's data bindings. And we want to bind that to the age range ID in the player table. And it's two-way binding. It's bound coming in and it's bound going out. So now when we go and run this, if we go and register, if I try to save nothing, it tells me it must enter a first name. TV show Sanford and Son, of course. Feel the big one. Feel the big one. Yeah. <laughs> Password. Password. And an age range, I can pick that and insert, and I'm good to go. We can go back to the database to, to ver uh, verify that he indeed got put in. And there they are. Notice that administrator is a column that I did not include in my update, right? Fortunately for us, the default, val uh, the default value for that is false, right? So therefore, new people that register aren't given um, administrator privileges, which is, you know, is a good thing. Would have to manually go in behind the scenes and make someone an administrator, which is, again, something, something good. I suppose we could have a separate administrator account creation, and, and that would work fine, too. I want to do one more thing. I want to do the validation of the password. I want to make sure the password matches. Um, and I'll just do this in one of the two modes, but you you'd probably want to do this both in edit and update mode, or insert and update mode. So let's go here, and I'm going to say, I want to do the user password, insert item. I'm going to go and I'm going to put a required validator here, required field validator, because they have to have a password, of course. And then go in and I can say, I can say what? Oh, I can put another text box on here. Maybe. 
not going to edit data bindings, so I don't want this to go anywhere in the database. Right? This is simply a validation step. And then I could use a compare validator to compare the two text boxes. So I can go here and I can say passwords don't match. And the validation is going to be, the control to validate will be text box 3, the control to compare it against will be text box 4. I'm not worrying too terribly much about the way it looks. But as I go in here and register a new person, if I type in it tells me that the passwords don't match. It doesn't give me that error. Okay. Now, I don't like the fact that it's showing me the password. It should not echo it. How do we fix that? Well, again, that's part of the template. And there is a mode here, text mode, single line, multi-line, or password. So I can make that a password. Again, it doesn't match, but if I put in question, what if I had a rule like some places do that your password has to be a certain number of characters contain um, the name of a U.S. president and three unprintable characters and an uppercase, a lowercase, and a number. What if I had a rule like that for my organization? How would I validate? How would I validate to make sure the password fit that form? You'd use like uh, regex, like a regular expression. You'd, use, you'd probably use a regular expression. All right. We haven't gone into that too much for validation, but the regular expression validator has predefined validation expression. There's predefined some regular expression. So like the format of a French postal code is predefined. Because their zip codes are apparently the same as ours. It has to be five digits. But a German postal code is something else. An internet URL has that format. Internet email address has that format. These can get incredibly complex. Zip code, or uh, a social security number is that format. A zip code is that format. And essentially, that's telling you it can either be five digits or five digits followed by a dash and four more digits. So if you do the zip plus nine, or zip plus four. You can actually write your own regular expression that would look at and analyze that. And, and as many professors or textbooks have said, that is beyond the scope of this class. Yeah, you, do that, you do that in advanced C-sharp class. Oh, you do? Yeah, you do a oh, cool. homework. Yeah, it's a lot of cool. Fun. Not really. Yeah. 
Uh, <laughs> put, put a lot of torture. Yeah, but, but you could do that. The other thing you could do is you could put a custom validator in. If you're more comfortable with your JavaScript skills than you are with your um, uh, regular expression skills, you could you could create a um, a JavaScript uh, JavaScript custom validator and and do it that way. And when you do that, you supply a client validation function. So you supply something <coughs> in your JavaScript that you're going to use to validate this guy. So a couple options you have if a couple options you have if your validation is sort of not one of the typical validations. Again. I, I, I always thought I had a great definition of a, a good software tool until someone came around and did a, did a better definition. My definition for a good software tool is it takes the common things that you do and makes them easy. And I thought that was a great definition and, and it is a, a good start of a definition. Someone added on to that and I forget who. They said, well, it makes the common things you do easy, but it makes uncommon things largely possible. So, okay. So, validating a date, yeah. Everyone in the world probably has to write validation for dates on forms. I mean, eventually there'll be a validation for a date. That's not that rare. Validation to make sure something has been entered. Validation to make sure two things match. All those things are very common validations. But, the .NET framework has these two sort of, hey, if you don't fit that mold, any of these other possibilities, try either a regular expression or sort of the all bets are off, you're on your own, but hey, at least we gave you a hook for this where you would write your own JavaScript validation. <coughs> all right, I'm going to need to take inventory of where we are. We have two more classes left, is that correct? We have... Tuesday of next week. The, the Thursday is Thanksgiving, right? Yes. I swear I thought there was another week in there until like just recently. And then the following week, remember, I am gone on Thursday. I'm here Tuesday but not Thursday. Now, a little bit of unfortunate timing um, with that, but do keep in mind that when I come back, the following week, I'll be available if you need assistance on your project in getting things wrapped up. In addition, sort of to compensate, I might make, you know, at least one of the days a work day to work on your project. So I have to take inventory to see what, if anything, I've sort of missed or not covered. I've covered things in a slightly different sequence uh, this semester. and. Um, I have to review through my notes to see if anything got lost in the shuffle as I reshuffle the material. All right. Since Jesse isn't here, I'll say, well, now it's time for lab. All right. See you over there. Enjoy this. This is about the only time in history I ever end a class early. All right. 265 wow, that's is, is, is an exception. Yeah, we've